Morning, Pine Grove. I'm really sad that we're not able to meet together this week, but I am really happy to be able to tell you to sing out loud and clear with me this morning as we sing, O Come All Ye Faithful.
Terry? Oh, how are you doing, Pastor Dan? How's your week been, Terry? Oh, man, we did okay. Like, we did a lot of meals for the seniors. There are people that are by themselves. Yeah. So, really exciting. A lot of cooking, a lot of chopping, a lot of cleaning, but we're so excited to be able to serve. Excellent. I'll bet that you're really thrilled that you took that five men, five nights, five. Oh, that was, yeah. That's, that's just to help you to understand about giving back. Yeah. That's what it's about. You took that oh, course. Oh, I didn't take that course. You I didn't take course. the course. I should have taken well, that Well, you course. need to register for the next one. I definitely will. Listen, yes. the reason I invited you here was I'm wondering, uh, what are you doing on Thursday night, December 24th? That's a good question. What am I doing that night? Terry, what are you doing that night? That night, December 24th. Probably around 7 o'clock, 6, 7 o'clock. 2, 7 o'clock. I'm not sure. What am I doing? Remind me, Pastor. You are going to be watching the Pine Grove oh, Community Church definitely. Christmas Eve service. It's yes, going to be... I am going to be excited. Very uh, excited about that. I yes. would like to see you excited. Oh, I'm going to see... I saw some people that have really... It's secret now, but they're going to be given their testimony or speeches or stories. Well, I'm not telling you. We don't know what it is. It just looked really exciting, so... I'm very excited for that, to see okay, that. Okay, so you're going to be there. I am going to be there, and I'm going to watch that. www.pg.ca, and you click on the online worship. Perfect. Perfect. I can't wait. Thank you. You got it. <laughs> Beth. <laughs> Thank you. 
Today is December the 20th. It is the fourth Sunday of Advent. And today we have four candles lit here. One is for hope, peace, love, and joy. And today we're talking about joy. So I'm just going to start off by saying, Jordan, it's been a joy to have you partnering with me this fall. It's been just such a blessing because... Um, I don't know how we would have done it. I know God always provides, but uh, yeah. it, it's been super having you. Yeah. So well, I've enjoyed uh, you having me as well. Good, good. So as long as it's a good experience for both of us, yes. we can look back on this with hopefully joy. Yes, yeah. joy. It's almost like joy is our topic right now. Yeah. You keep yeah. saying joy a lot. <laughs> Do I keep saying it a lot? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it's uh, the holidays are yeah. here. Yeah. I'm actually looking forward to Christmas Day. I, I don't know what it's going to be like. I think it will just be Anne and me. Okay. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm not depressed about it. Are you, uh, are you like uh, Nag and Anne asking her if it's uh, time to open up gifts yet? Because my <laughs> kids are doing that every day. No, not at is all. Is it Christmas tomorrow? Is it, is it today? <laughs> And we open, we're opening up presents, right? Yeah. Uh, no, no. It's pretty exciting for them. Yeah. But they still haven't touched any presents yet under the tree. No. So okay. they had, so, yeah. And they they have joy, but there's patience there. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, you have to walk through the, the trial of the, the week before Christmas <laughs> so that you can experience this wonderful joy. So is that the madness behind having the presents out there so early? I think so. Yeah. My, my mother used to put a present out with my sister's name on it just to torment her <laughs> before Christmas. <laughs> we um we had great Christmases when I was growing up. My dad in particular in particular he loved Christmas and he'd be the first one up he'd be banging pots and pans to get the rest of us up and he, he just seemed to love Christmas. And we had quite a few funny things happen at Christmas time. But I'll, I'll just tell you one of the stories that I think back of now with a, a chuckle on my face. And it, it, it gives me happy thoughts, but it, it also brings me some joy. Um, Dad was renowned for bringing home ugly Christmas trees. You know, the type where the, there's branches here and here, and they used to spray snow. And the snow went right through and it landed on the wall. Well, Dad brought home a Christmas tree one year, and it was a spindly little thing. And he brought it in the house, and my mother looked at him, and she said, Tom, that will never, ever do. Go get another tree. So my dad went out and found one just like it, and he cut it down, and he, he brought it home. And then he took wire, and he wired the two together. And I can still see this Christmas tree all wired together, and it, it's just one of those really good Christmas happy memories. You must have some happy memories. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of a lot of young kids, and I guess we all like love gifts. But for me, it was just coming down Christmas morning, and I would we would uh, my sisters and I would we would wake each other up at seven o'clock, and we would go open up all of our stockings. That was a fun part. But for for whatever reason, I was I was super excited. I know. Everyone loves Christmas, but I was so excited. And I wish I could, I wish you could experience this Pine Grove. I'm going to try, but I was running down the stairs and I would run into our living room where our stockings are and where all the presents were. And I got my stocking in my hands and I ran to the couch and I was about to sit down. So I basically ran to the couch and just jumped back and I just whacked my head against the wall so hard. Oh, no. And somehow we got it on the video camera. I don't. Like, there was no iPhones back then, but my sister, my oldest sister, Jocelyn, got it. Somehow we got it on videotape, and for years after that, we, they relived that. So it's actually my, my failure moment. It was actually yes. their, their joy, yes. which, not, not, a good, not a good scripture point. Well, their joy and their <laughs> success, right? yeah. and, and we experience joy yes. at Christ's expense. It's just, the, that's the pastor. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But it was me. It was I got this. I got this Zeddy bear. It just it was just a stuffed bear, and I was so happy. And just but I just smoked my head back so hard. But it, it didn't even phase me. 
I just brushed it off because pressed on for the joy. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Except man. for the joy before. Yeah. Um, when, when the angels appeared to the shepherds, and um, I, like here they are sitting up in the field doing their business like they did mm -hmm. every night. And the, the heavens open up, and these angels are there. And the first thing he said, which makes total sense, was fear not. Um, I probably I, would have peed my pants <laughs> if I saw the angels in heaven open up. Maybe wow. so, maybe so. But I, I think about the words that said, fear not, for I bring you good tidings of great joy. Mm -hmm. And I think about that word, great joy. Um, Psalm 30, verse 5 says, weeping comes for night, but joy comes in the morning. That freshness of joy, it was there, it was just waiting for us. It's like Christmas. Yeah. You, you go to bed Christmas night just with that anticipation of sleeping and waking up to a, a wonderful celebration. Mm -hmm. And as we walk through the, the, the dark times of our lives, knowing that there can be joy in the morning when we've walked through it. And I also thought about um, what is great joy versus regular joy. Mm. Well, the whole verse about like the weeping, it comes comes at night. Like it's there's a few hours of that. The night doesn't last forever. The, the day is like the majority, it's the bulk of the hours it's where you get all your production done. Like it's, there's a couple hours you're gonna have to endure. But when those hours are over, it's gonna be morning time. And you get to experience all of that joy in that morning. Um, so I'd say like, there's something that happens church with, with great joy that we would never choose, I don't think we'd ever choose God to do it this way, but if somehow he does it, if you wanna, <laughs> you want to be patient God gives you chances to be patient mm -hmm. um, and you know what if humans if we got everything our heart would desire we wouldn't learn anything in this world we wouldn't grow we you learn patience by how right so, <laughs> dealing with kids but but you, you get trials. you trials. get yeah trials is what grows you trials is what makes you kind tri tri trials is what gives you that chance to I think King Country said that song about choose joy and that was like, joy is a choice. It's through experience you can have that. Right. So, yeah. it, it, It's his choice. It, it's right there before you. <laughs> yeah. You know, your, your Christmas presents under the tree. <laughs> Would you ever leave one unopened? You, you'll always open them. And I, I think God gives us these gifts of peace and hope and love and joy. But do we open the package? And do we receive the joy? Do we make that choice? And this Christmas, um, it, it's just different. Yeah. You know, we, we can't have those big celebrations. Family's not coming. Um, it, 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 it's going to be not the same. But I'm choosing to have a great Christmas. Yeah, same. Because, you know, the joy of the Lord, that's what I want to experience. It's, it's finally this one time where the turkey doesn't matter. The, <laughs> the presents don't matter. Even having family around, I, I will the Christ is the center. And I'm, I'm thankful for this opportunity this year to just make him the center of Christmas. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, Jesus or God's how he, he uses everything, obviously, to teach us stuff, to grow us, to bless us. But he's kind of really using this, this time to redefine Christians, I think, in a good way. I do and almost too. saying, like... <laughs> How much do you love me? There's a saying, it's, it's a great one line, but like, it, it, until you experience it, it's something else. But it's like, you don't know Jesus is all you need until Jesus is all you have. And so like in this time, you could, you could argue like, okay, what do you, what do you experience at Christmas time? Because some people might not be having family and friends over, uh, getting presents in the mall might not be the same experience. Whatever your traditions are, coming, coming to church, Pine Grove, I've never been to a Christmas Eve Pine Grove service, but I will someday. Yes. Um, but I think God would press you and say, okay, like, what's the point? And 
I think it's a good loving hug a way of saying it's about me remember so keep the number one the number one yes amen mm. amen um, I, I think too you know about people who, who are sad mm. and that it, it is a sad time for them you know people have, have died um, it's the anniversary of deaths um, it, there's a lot of sadness that comes with the holiday and I, I, I feel for those folks but I also think that sadness isn't the absence of joy. Mm. You, you can have an undergirding of joy, uh, which, which is it's a joy that's combined with peace and hope and love. And it's unchanging. Yeah. Uh, it's like happiness. Can you have joy without happiness? Are, are the two words even related? I don't think they are. I, I think they're totally different words. I think that happiness is that emotion that we experience. Something, an event makes us yeah. happy. Yeah. Uh, you know, something your kids do <laughs> makes you happy. Mm -hmm. um, my, my children, my grandchildren, they do things that make me happy. But it brings me great joy to know that this Christmas, my grandchildren are in a loving home with loving parents and they're going to have the tree and the gifts and all the trimmings. That brings me joy. Knowing yeah. that others will be blessed. Yeah. No, it's, um, I think just, yeah, just, I think a lot of our, <laughs> do I feel joy, do I not? What's this all about? If we just reflect on the good things that we have in our, in our life, mm -hmm. it just, I know, like, comparison kills joy. So, first off, start comparing your life to someone else's, and joy will slowly bubble up within you. Yes. But it's, and we could, and we could, and our source of joy comes from Jesus and our faith, the author and perfecter of our faith. And I think when it comes down to it, just joy comes, I think, just from meat and potatoes. The, the, not literally, not literally. Well, but maybe the, <laughs> there's gravy on them, of course, oh, yeah. Oh, not sauerkraut, though, right? I'm not a sauerkraut. You are, though. Oh, I love sauerkraut, yeah. But, oh, poor. <laughs> um, but just the simple parts in our life, uh, when you just, with just being loving, kind to your wife or your spouse, your kids, reading your Bible, doing your daily devotions, coming to church, staying involved, like, that is where your joy is created from. Because who gives you the joy? <laughs> Everything that that's about, it's about Jesus. Right. And for, it took me a while, a long time to get this with hockey, but I always thought that the, the NHL goalies, the goalies that were like the best of the best, the cream of the crop, what made them better was that they could make saves on the top of their head. They could make saves that our universe hasn't even learned how to do yet. Like, they were just like far out here and they had this nuance every time there a guy was coming down. They, the point is, what they're just so good at doing and they're perfect at doing it were just the meat and potato things. With so, I'll just use a few things for hockey lingo, but a goalie, the way his rebound control would be, or he was always square to the shooter, just stuff you learn as a little kid. But they were just perfect with it. And I think, church, we could relate that to our, where our joy comes from and having joy in this time is. Do the little things well, because we can still do those little things well. COVID hasn't stopped you from opening up your Bible. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. So, yeah, the Nehemiah says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Mm. It, it's it, that's a good one. In in the midst of of the darkness and the disappointment, we can experience joy just in knowing God loves us. Mm. He He cares about us. If I, if I could send one message this year, it would be really move in to the joy, the, the love, the hope, and the peace that you have in Jesus. <clears throat> um, hold, hold tight to that. and don't, don't let anyone or any experience or lack of experience rob you of that. But press in toward the joy of the Lord. And seek him and make this truly a, a Christian holiday. Um, this is a time for, 
for the Christians, the followers of Christ, to, to shine, just shine so brightly. Um, I, I look forward to 2021. Yes. And next week, our service is going to be one that's put on by the denomination. So people all across Canada will be watching uh, a service that the ministry, ministry center has created for us. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the, the week between the holidays. Mm -hmm. And um, I look forward to working more with you, Jordan, yes. in the new year. And, um, you know, I, I believe that as the Church of Pine Grove, that we're like the racehorses. We're right at the gate. And we're just <laughs> waiting for those gates to open. Um, the society meeting this year, it's going to be on YouTube. But it's going to be a great meeting. And you're gonna, people are going to see the planning that's gone in place. And I look forward to that. I, if it, it's important to always look forward to something. That's a good point. That's, and that's the, he, and I know you're closing, but like that's, that's the Hebrews 12, 1 verse that we all like for the joy set before him. He endured the cross. Yeah. And who was Jesus' joy? We were us, his joy. Us. Looking forward to things. That's a good point. Amen. Yeah. So enjoy the joy of the Lord this Christmas. Um, make it a priority and may God bless you. We look forward to being with you on Christmas Eve. The video will be ready at 6 p.m. Christmas Eve. You'll be able to sign on and uh, check that out. We've got some really good things planned this year for the YouTube service, so we hope you'll join us. Jordan, would you close us in prayer? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time. We thank you, especially for this time of the year when it's about you. It's always about you, but especially mm. this is this is your big day. This is Advent. Advent's about a coming. It's it's um, your, you coming to this world is not just about a birth, but it's, it's about a coming. It's you coming into this world to save us from our sins, and, and invite us to have this life abundantly in you. So we love you so much, and we thank you that you are the one that endured all, all the worst things that could happen, going to the cross at, our, at your expense so we could experience joy. We thank you so much. We love you, and pray, pray that you keep us safe and help us make smart choices as a church and a community and a body of believers during this season. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. And all God's people said, <laughs> Amen. Amen.